Welcome to the Re-Community Materials Recovery Facility. I'll be your... Hey, guys, can we cut the sorting out for just a few minutes and try to get a tour here? Whew. Much better. Uh, welcome, I'm Tom, and I am very excited to be your tour guide. I'm going to show you exactly what it is we do here at the Re-Community Materials Recovery Facility, or MRF for short. Uh, let's get going before they crank up the noise again. The whole process starts here at the scale. It's like a huge version of the scale you have in your bathroom. And it's probably more accurate. Inbound trucks drive right onto a scale for weighing. We empty them out, then weigh them again. The difference is the amount of recyclables being delivered for sorting and processing. Either someone needs to clean their room, or we've reached the tipping floor, a huge area where we store mixed resources before the separation starts. Trucks dump loose or bailed resources here. Then the payloader pushes them into piles. Very organized piles. Here's the illustrated version of our in-feed conveyor. Pretty cool, right? Let's check out the real thing. Here's where things really get moving. The payloader snatches up loose resources and empties them out onto the in-feed conveyor, where our handy-dandy metering drum turns, creating an even flow of materials moving along to the next step. Yep. Yep. Nope. Oh, hey, don't mind me. Just doing a little pre-sorting, and much like these guys. Before the separation process starts, our pre-sorters do an amazing job of picking out items that aren't recyclable, could get tangled in the system, or even hurt our employees. For example, their eagle eyes can spot things like plastic bags, and as the materials whiz by, they snatch them up and place them into large vacuums so they can be recycled separately. Whoa! You gotta check out how we separate 3D objects from the boring old 2D ones. OCC stands for Old Corrugated Cardboard. And the OCC screen won't stand for 3D objects, like containers ending up in the same place as 2D objects, like fibers. The OCC screen is an inclined series of rotating disks that allow paper and other material to fall right through them. <laughs> the next stop on our tour is this crazy looking machine called the ONP screen. The old newsprint screen, or ONP screen if you want to be hip with our insider lingo, is an inclined series of rotating disks that separates old newsprint from mixed paper and containers. If materials are too small or rigid, they drop right between the disks, or take a trip down the incline. Can you guess what we're going to talk about next? Under the paper screen, the intimidatingly named glass breaker screen busts up the glass that falls below the container line and separates it from the non-glass containers. All the non-glass safely bounces across the discs. Kind of hypnotic, isn't it? We think so. Paper. We all love it. We all need it. But how do we sort it? Let's head down to the paper sorter and find out. Paper gets the superstar treatment here as it flows down conveyor belts and machinery to make sure we end up with a product that has a minimum amount of non-paper contaminants. And we also make sure there are paper sorters along the conveyor belts to capture as much newsprint, paper, and magazines as possible. Think of them like reverse mailmen. We keep things moving with the commingle conveyor belt. After fibers like paper and cardboard are separated, this belt carries a mix of plastics, cartons, and metals through more machines and even a little human separation. People often ask me, how do you sort plastic to ensure you're recycling contaminant-free product and capturing the most high-density plastics like detergent containers, milk jugs, and cartons? Seriously, I get that question at least 10 times a day. Good thing it's easy to answer. And we carefully sort plastic through a series of optical sorters and conveyor belts through the entire facility and also utilize plastic sorters along commingle conveyor belts. We've got it down to a science. Do you like magnets? So do we. Our steel magnet is a high-powered magnetic drum that attracts ferrous metals to the revolving shell. Once attracted to the revolving drum, the steel is rotated, then released when it reaches the discharge point beyond the magnetic field. Hey, is my watch in there? 
The optical sorter may sound like something your optometrist uses, but it's actually an infrared sorting system that separates out polyethylene terephthalate. It, please don't ask me to spell that. That fancy word means plastic soda bottles to you and me. Anyways, the belt moves ultra fast, so let's slow it down to show you that. Within milliseconds, the optical sorter identifies the PET using an infrared camera and instantly shoots a burst of air to blow the recyclables into a different chute. Magnets aren't magic, but the eddy current separator magnetically deflects aluminum out from the flow faster than you can say, Abra Cadabra. The eddy current separator uses a strong magnetic field to deflect aluminum from the incoming material flow. Items like aluminum foil and beverage cans are easily extracted using this process. Okay, this is harder than I thought, but moving and stacking our bales of fully separated resources is pretty darn easy. These blocks of recyclables are held together by steel wire and come in all sizes and shapes. But generally, the bales are 3 foot by 3 foot by 4 foot and can weigh up to a ton or 2,000 pounds. Okay, I give up. Send this down for sorting. <sighs> when we have our bales all cubed up, they're snagged with a forklift and taken to a top secret location called Area 51. Dude, really? Just kidding. It's only our bale storage area where we separate them by material type and stack them up for our outbound trucks. Don't leave me hanging, dude. <sighs> you know, even as your humble host, I have some chores to do around here. Luckily, all of the big glass cleanup is handled with our official glass cleanup system. Here, the system removes paper, dirt, and other debris from the broken glass material by using a vibrating screen and gusts of air. Sure beats my broom. <laughs> this thing has splinters. Ow. Next stop, the glass bunker. Crushed and cleaned glass gets its very own storage where it waits for a truck to pick it up. Maybe take it out to dinner. And definitely haul it to a nearby glass reprocessor. Sadly, not all materials are recyclable. Even though we do everything we can to create absolutely zero waste, we have to say, Goodbye to some residue. The residue belt carries non-recyclable material out of our facility and towards the residue bunker. But we also place quality control agents along the belt to ensure that recyclable materials aren't mistakenly sent to a landfill. After all the hard work and intricate separating, we still have to store the non-recyclable materials. So they go to a bunker or compactor until getting shipped off to a landfill. We hate to see them go though, because we're always working hard to see a day where there's absolutely zero waste. We're getting close to the end of our process, but the journey for our finished bales is just beginning. Forklifts load the bales onto an outgoing trailer, which takes the material to a paper bill, plastic processor, or other end user. From there, the recycled materials are remade into new products, saving valuable resources and are back in stores in as little as six weeks. It's not all super magnets and optical sorters. We also have education centers to help teach what ReCommunity is all about. Check out our website directory page to find out if there is an education center near you. Our offices are full of dedicated employees just like me, working to recycle more and better our communities. So remember, don't throw away our future. Thanks so much for taking the time to learn a little bit about ReCommunity. I hope you've had just as much fun learning about our facility as I did showing you around. If you'd like to learn even more, click around our interactive MRF and education page. And if you'd like to see it all in person, We'd love to see you soon.